uh, how are you all going? Hope you're all well. Um, yeah, so it's been a couple of weeks since I spoke to you last and um, I haven't actually been uh, getting a lot of knitting or sewing done. Uh, last weekend it was Paul's birthday so we ended up uh, going to Port Macquarie for the weekend. Um, so yes, I didn't get a huge amount of uh, sewing done. I did get more knitting done this, this last couple of weeks. Uh, so yeah, I, ha I don't actually have a huge amount of things to show you, but I didn't want to leave the podcast go uh, for too long. Um, also, I've been thinking about the podcast and what I wanted to say on it, and actually, I don't really talk much about what I do at Skein, and I thought that's a bit of a shame, because I mean, that's why I started the video, was to talk about work and what's it, what it's like in a dye studio. I think because I don't record there, I don't sort of think about it, I just talk about my projects and what I've been doing. So I am actually going to talk more about that, sort of introduce a bit more about what I do, um, what happens in the week. Uh, some weeks are great and not a lot happens and then other weeks are not so great. It's just the roller coaster of having a business and um, dealing with the ups and downs. There are more ups obviously than downs but you know, um, things do happen and yeah, and you just got to deal with it. So um, I just thought it'd be fun. You guys might enjoy hearing about it. Um, yeah. So I'll start with what's been happening in the studio. And this week we have been looking at our yarn and um, working out. Basically, we found a new supplier. And it's very exciting. They have lots of um, interesting bases. So we're bringing in new yarn and I've been sort of emailing back and forth about shipping and availability and um, they're excellent. They've just been so good. They've sent uh, samples and they're fantastic. I've dyed them. I really like them. Uh, so we're ordering in quite a bit of yarn from them. Uh, so yeah, that's really, really exciting when you get new yarn in. One of the yarns is actually going to be a Polworth, which is really exciting. It's a New Zealand Polworth. Uh, it's a sock weight. They actually have a DK weight as well, which uh, I will be getting into at some stage, but I just wanted to get the, um, the sock in first, sort of introduce everything slowly. Um, yeah, and then there's a few bases that I've had that I'm going to discontinue. They're just, they're not really selling that well. I've had them forever. Um, so yeah, sort of shaking things up a little bit at the studio. I feel really out of breath. I've actually been running up and down the stairs, like bringing everything in and I ah, just need to catch my breath. <sighs> um, what else? Um, I have been really busy um, getting the new colorways together for uh, this new, next season that's coming up. So we will be heading into autumn and of course um, the people in the Northern Hemisphere are going into spring. So I am uh, reshuffling our colorways. Uh, I don't, I, it's a new thing. I used to keep colorways and sort of just add in um, add new colorways and take colorways off that weren't doing very well just as I saw fit but what I thought would be great and it is actually working really well is that each season I bring out a colorway collection it's really quite an involved process because I just don't go through and add and subtract yarn willy-nilly like I um, really take into consideration the whole look of the colorways page and I make sure that it's a cohesive color um, combination, that it's not sort of bits and pieces thrown in, it all sort of matches nicely. Uh, the other thing that I like about it is, of course, when you change se seasons, um, you, uh, your colorways, or well, your color preferences change. So. Say, even if you're just like one person who likes just one colour, so you like pink, well maybe in 
Uh, summer you like sort of a pastel pink and then when you come into winter you like more of a dark blush pink. So th those type of things, seasons actually do really influence the colours that you choose. So th that's been a lot of fun too, sort of thinking about both seasons because we're obviously in the opposite season as w what's happening in the north. So thinking about both seasons and putting together some nice colours that kind of reflect um, those seasons and it's it's yeah it's been great uh, it's a lot of work though because I the new colorways I have to dye up obviously then I have to photograph I have to put um, everything together on a colorways page um, we've introduced dye to watercolors now so that all has to be changed that takes forever but it's worth it I, I'm I just I can't wait till I uh, release them next week so yeah, um, I've actually bought back some older colorways as well. Yeah, so I've introduced um, some of the old colorways that we love and, you know, our customers love. But I have reimagined them. So I've sort of gone through the dye sheet and I've looked at the recipe and how I, I used to dye them. And then I've sort of tweaked it a little bit. So I've, um, I haven't touched the, the dye colors, but I've just been messing around with the techniques of how I dye, dye these colorways and I'm really really happy with them. Uh, so yeah, that, that's um, been taking up quite a lot of time. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, the studio is in the industrial area so it's uh, just up the road from us and it's a big kind of shed it's not a shed but it's like in this big complex and it's just like as you would imagine a industrial block to be it's like big tin huge big ceilings um on the inside i've already explained this before on the podcast but when you go in there is like a little uh well it's actually quite a big area where you can have a showroom and initially when we um rented the, the place we were thinking of putting a shop front but unfortunately, um, that area and that the actual place itself is not really good for a shop. Uh, it's very noisy. It's just, yeah, it's just, I don't think it's going to happen. I wish it would happen because I'd love to have a, a, a walk-in shop as well as a, a dye studio. But yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, it's not, it's not like it's never going to happen. I might actually be able to to work it but it's not looking great but anyway we have that area we have an air conditioner in there we have an office to the as you're walking in an office to the left that has an air conditioner you walk keep walking through in the middle there's this huge big room of um, storage stuff and that's where we do our packing and we have an air conditioner in there and usually in the, in the middle of summer all air conditioners are going it sounds really wasteful and terrible but you need it it's so hot there's no insulation in that building and um, it's like an oven and then when you walk out the back that's where the dying area is and there's no air conditioning out there and it is hot like at the end of the day I walk out of the studio feeling like I've just jumped in a, a pool of water like I am wet like clothes are like saturated because I've been sweating so much it sounds terrible but it's really really hot um, and that really only sort of affects me for about a month out of the year because the humidity here is incredibly hot and um, February is always the worst month it starts to get a little bit better uh, now as time goes on but yes it's just it's been incredibly hot so yeah I'll be looking for, I love summer, but I will be looking for, forward to cooler weather. So yeah, that's what's been happening in the studio. Um, so my knitting stuff, uh, I have been still knitting on the Embrins cardigan. Um, and I, this is it here. Um, I haven't done a huge amount of work on this. It was just too hot uh, to knit on it because it is quite heavy, although it's only a small project, so it's not too bad. But basically, I'm on the sleeves now, and I'll show you a bit closer. So that's it there. 
Um, I'm knitting this in the Ren and Ollie Spin DK. It's beautiful yarn. Uh, this is in the Cinnabar colorway, and the sleeves on this will be long. Um, but yeah, just thinking about it, I don't think I've made, I've done anything on it since the last time I, I, I spoke to you. So um, yeah, hopefully I'll be getting the sleeves on this soon and just finishing it because there's really not a lot more to do. So the next project that I've been working on is the Cinecita, Cinecita, Cinecita. Uh, it's an Italian uh, pronunciation uh, from uh, Rilili and I saw this, um, I'm not actually sure when this uh, top came out, I'm guessing it's been a while, um, but I only just sort of discovered it on uh, Ravelry and I love it, it's just fantastic. I'll put a little photo in up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and I recently got in to the studio some uh, merino sport, so just uh, the superwash 100% merino. And I love sport yarn, I think because the climate that we live in, um, sport and DK are probably the two um, yarns that we would probably use most often for winter. I mean, uh, sock yarn mostly, so sock, sport and DK. Anyway, um, I had um, oh, there was another pattern that I was looking at, but it had long sleeves, but I decided that I, I actually wanted this because it's still going to be hot for quite some time. Anyway, so I cast it on, and this is in our colorway called um, Velvet. <laughs> and as you can see, it's got uh, these really nice uh, lace details on the sleeves. And it's a top down, so you can try it on as you go. Um, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It has this really helpful chart, which reminds me a little bit of um, Helen Stewart with her charts. I just find them, they are just so handy because as you go, you can just tick off what you're doing. Um, you don't have to keep looking at instructions. When am I meant to increase and you know what's happening on this row what's happening on that row because this is actually even though it's got quite a simple lace pattern one round your like the actual lace pattern is the sleeve increases which is a really good idea so one round you're increasing with the lace so the yarn overs are actually what, what you're increasing for for the raglan and then the next round or next round's a plain round and then the following round you have to increase on the front and the back as well as the sleeves. So it gets a bit, after a while you're sort of like, what am I doing? Which one am I up to? I don't know what, what row. This is just so handy. So I just sit back, relax, knit. I've knit so much. I only cast this on two days ago. And that's how much I've done, which is quite a lot. Um, yeah, really, really enjoying it. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say yet, just that I, it seems to be quite a, a speedy, um, speedy project and hopefully I should have this done quite soon. Um, and I want to get it off the needle soon so I can wear it. The Embrance cardigan, I can take my time with that because I don't need that for a couple of months yet because it won't get cold until probably May. Yeah, May, June. Um, but yes, I will definitely need this one sooner. Now, my finished object. I finished the Laminar Wrap by Amber O'Brien. And I am so in love with this wrap. So here it is in its glory. Um, as I spoke about the last time about this wrap. I did, I actually did 15 repeats of the lace and the garter stitch and that was using in the garter stitch uh, B mine which is a darker colour here as you can see it's sort of um, the segments of, of the darker garter stitch and then I swapped halfway through and did 15 of the light which is the whisper which I used back here in the panel 
but yes, yeah, so I swapped it over and now I, on the second half I used the darker bee mine in the panel and the lighter whisper as the uh, garter stitch. I love this so much. I I was actually really sad to cast off. I I just found it really soothing and relaxing. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's really it's repetitive. Uh, but it's not boring because you've got two different lace panels and, well, they're the same lace panel but they sort of change a little bit. And, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I just, I think the changing the colour, um, I don't know, I just really, really enjoyed it. I took this overseas, as I said, I didn't really work on it much, but when I started working on it, um, it would have been maybe a month ago, um, I, yeah, I just... Every night I would, you know, be really excited to sit down and I'd be looking forward to knitting on this um, in front of the TV. So yeah, it's huge as you can see. Stand up. So it's massive. You could even, <laughs> I know it's not meant to, but you could make this for like at the end of your bed. I think that would look really nice. It's just so stunning. Um, you can also just squish it up and use it as a sort of a, um, a nice sort of uh, scarf, which is very warm. So yeah, I really love it. So this is the Laminar Wrap by Amber O'Brien and I actually would definitely, I think what I might do is uh, maybe next summer cast on another one. I, I don't know why, but I'm not really into socks at the moment. I, I was sort of, last year I was in this big sock knitting phase um, and I, I was knitting quite a lot of vanilla socks, but I don't know, I just... Um, not really into them at the moment but this is just such a good um, alternative to socks because it's simple and yeah what's that yeah oh and the great thing is as I mentioned last time is that I knit in the ends as I went so when I actually blocked this it was so satisfying I just cut all the ends off because they'd already been woven in and there was lots so yeah, big thumbs up for that. Uh, sewing projects. Because last week, or last weekend, we went away for Paul's birthday, I did no sewing whatsoever. I did start on the Pussy Bow Blouse by Sew Over It. And this is kind of almost finished. Um, just find. So that's it there. Uh, it has the ties here. I don't know how well that's picking up. Probably not that great. But that's it there. All I have left to do is to put the sleeves on. And yeah, it, it's really nice project. Um, it is... There's a lot of hand stitching in it. And at first I was like, ugh. I uh, just kind of want to get this, you know, sewn up and, and, and wear it. Um, so I wasn't all that fussed on um, hand sewing. It's just slip stitches basically. You slip stitch the ties onto the neck and there's more uh, hand sewing on the cuff. But you know, I actually quite enjoyed it. As soon as I started sewing, I sort of relaxed. I put on a podcast. Actually, no, it was an audiobook. And I started um, hand sewing and it was really nice. Just like kind of sitting back relaxing and knitting. It's, it's, it's a slower pace. Um, yeah, I quite enjoyed it. My hand sewing needs a bit of work. <laughs> it's not great. But you know, it'll do the job. And um, yeah, so I've got this one almost finished. I, I cut out the other Pussy Bow blouse in this lovely fabric with the white with the um, sort of it's almost like watercolour birds it's very sort of reminds me of Japanese paintings um, so that one will be next 
and yeah, and then I will decide what I'm going to make after that. Actually, Spotlight at the moment has a huge sale. It's like 40% of all their fabric. And then they have this other deal where you get 50% off anything in store that you want that isn't on sale, which is a bit of a bummer because I was looking at Serger uh, machines because I really want to get one. Um, and they had a brother, which is what I've been looking at. Um, and But the only thing is it's on sale, so there goes that idea. But I could get something else and it, it's just one thing in store, 50% off. So I could actually buy some really nice fabric. They have Liberty of London. So maybe I could buy a couple of metres of that and get 50% off. I don't know, I'll have to have a think, but I really want to use it. So, um, yeah, I hope everybody is well and um, have a lovely weekend and it's really nice to speak to you again. I've actually, you might have noticed, I've pushed the camera right back because I kind of feel like I'm, you know, right up against the screen when I talk to you guys <laughs> and it just, it, when I edit it, just, I hate it. So yes, I've pushed the camera back and I hope the audio is going to be okay because I'm actually recording on my phone. So we shall see. Um, yeah, have a great week and I will speak to you maybe next week, although I'm putting the new colorways on the shop, so it may not be. It might be the week after, but whatever the case is, I will see you soon. Bye.